The Hog's Die is brought to you by TicketClub.com, your one-stop shop for live events nationwide. Whether you're looking for game, theater, or live performance tickets, don't sweat it. TicketClub.com has you covered. So make sure you're going there for all your live entertainment needs, and make sure you're clicking over to them from the banner at the top of thehogsdie.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Hog's Die. It's DC's unofficial leading source for all things Redskins and the NFL. Coming in hot with another fresh episode. We got some Super Bowl stuff. We got some contract stuff. We got some rumor mill stuff. We got some position group breakdown stuff. I got my boys here, Alex Zeese and Steve Thomas. Hey, what hey, more hope. could you ask for? Absolutely nothing. That's right. We Alex, could ask for Jamal. That's yeah, one more we could ask for Jamal. <laughs> He's not here with us tonight. That's why I didn't say his name. Though. You said that's all, we, that's all you could ask for. I'm just saying we could ask for Jamal. Right. That's, abs- that's absolutely The full true. team, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, how often does a team make it the whole season without someone dropping off and getting injured, right? I mean, it happens to every team, but even us. Uh, and this season, I think I, I, I missed a few. Jamal missed a few. Steve never has anything to do, so he's always here. Um, <laughs> I just, I'm just Steve. dedicated yeah. more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Steve's just, our it's, it's something team. along the lines of my OCD will not allow me to miss something on the calendar. <laughs> yes, that's probably – it's more it's that more, than anything. That's more that than anything else, right. I'm just telling you. <laughs> right. It's a virtue. It's a virtue, Steve. It's an annoying virtue, but it's a virtue nonetheless. It's my military training uh, in me. You have a calendar update thing. You have to do it. Yeah. Hey, man. Own it. Own it. Um, well, we got some announcements to make right up front. Steve, do you want to take this away? Take the mic for a few minutes and uh, sure. shoot, us, shoot us an announcement here? Yeah. Well, number one, before I get to that, um, this is our final Thursday show until the se- new season starts. So – um, we will have this show, and then we will have our next show will be next Monday, meaning not Monday the 11th, but Monday the 18th. So we will have about a 10 day break in Hog Styes. We will have an It's Just Business show next week to fill the void. Um, but we are now transitioning to our record on the weekend to make it easier on us since there's no games right. scheduled. Well, there's uh, the Alliance for American Football. Okay, nobody cares about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll watch the first week. I'll see how it looks. I, I, we may it was, spoiler alert. We may actually talk about that on IJB because actually I heard um, Ebersol talking about that on the radio today. There's a whole bunch of interesting stuff going on with with that. But yeah. here's our real announcement. Um, yeah, we are searching for one or two uh, con- more contributors to the Hogsty. So if you think you can write and you think you know football. Let us know because we are soliciting open we, – it's an open call for solicitations for writers. So what we need you to do, again, if you think you can do this, um, first of all, there's a story on our website that gives you the details. But write a 700-word column, um, no, you know, minimum 700 words, um, about a Redskins topic of your choice. We are not going to help you with topics because one of the requirements of this position is you have to be able to dream up topics on your own because we are not going to dictate to you. You have to be a self-starter. I am not going to sit here and give you topics week after week after week. Um, so you have to do that. But um, right Steve already does seven, that for me. <laughs> I do, but Alex is a special case. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I have to All beg right. and cajole to write anything, so I have to hand him topics. But point is – uh, we're excited about trying to find somebody. Um, we think um, you know it's an opportunity for you to get your name out there and mm-hmm. get people read, uh, to read uh, you know to read your stuff, and you know we're credentialed sometimes, and so you know we can if things work out, you know we can possibly talk about credentialing. Um, so that's what we can offer you. But we're looking forward to it. We've had a whole bunch of people interested already in in less than a day. So um, the deadline for this is going to be Sunday night. Um, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. So Sunday the 17th, if you send us something at 12.01 on the 18th, we will ignore it. So please get your call, get your submissions into us over the next 10 days or so. And did you tell them where to oh, submit those? Sorry, to that's true. Uh, email us at thehogsty at gmail.com. Right. And if you have any questions, you can email us there or DM us on Twitter. I opened our DMs to everybody for a limited period of time. Um, cause I got really tired of people saying I want to submit something, but I can't DM you. So, uh, our DMs are open for everybody for now. 
they will be closed here shortly. But um, those two places, right? And, and are we? Awesome. We're, we're not telling them how we're going to read all their stuff on the air and make fun of it, right? <laughs> we will not do that. Oh. <laughs> Uh-huh. If we do yeah. make fun of it, we'll do it anonymously at least. <laughs> <laughs> we'll at least give you that courtesy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, whoosh, that's the sound of Steve's whip cracking on the fan base. Get to work, yeah. you noobs. We it's because see you I'm here. beating you guys, and I can't beat enough stories out of you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> yep. It's true. Life gets in the way. But, hey, that's why it's wonderful to expand the team. So, hey, we look forward to hearing from all of you guys at home. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Build that talent we, pool. The, I like it. Uh, yeah. Well, that's right. With that in mind, we'll move right on, then let's jump right into it, because we had sort of a big game just in the last couple of days. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but it was kind of like the pinnacle of the NFL year. Mm-hmm. At the Super Bowl plan, the Redskins are never playing anywhere near this time, so <laughs> some of us are getting out of the football mood. But we did have the Super Bowl. We all watched it. Let's discuss a little bit everything from the game itself to the halftime show. Let's just do a little recap. Okay. So uh, I can't recap the halftime show because I actually boycotted it. And didn't watch a minute mm. of it. So, mm. but I watched the well, game. I, yeah. I did. I did watch it. I'm not a Maroon Five fan, in any way. I think they're a sissy band and not a real rock band. And you know, I, I'm. But I watched Agreed. it just as I was curious. I watched a TV I, show of Will Wheaton playing Dungeons and Dragons with other celebrities for okay, 25 minutes. Oh, I love that. That's pathetic. Tabletop. Shout yeah. out. No, it's great, Steve. Don't even hate on it until you rock him in. It's great. <laughs> but in in terms of the halftime show, uh, why can't the NFL just? Hire a band and let them play. For sure, sake, Steve. Why do we have to have 18 guests? You know, because number one, I, again, I'm not a Maroon 5 fan. I'm not a fan of the music, but a lot of people are. And if I don't know about five, that. Just let them play. Uh, they, they sell a ton of records, and they get a ton of radio. Or somebody's listening to them. You know, but when you chop it up with a choir, with a rapper from the 90s, and mm-hmm. a rapper, a current rapper who's very popular, but they had to bleep out half his – you know, half of his lyrics, and then he fell off the stage. It creates, that was weird. It creates a ve- – he literally fell off the stage. Really? <laughs> like accidentally awesome. Fell off. Yeah, there's video of it from a – I'll, a I'll look up that video later. Yeah. Um, but it, it makes for a very disjointed show. You know, it was very just here, there, and everywhere. I thought it was terrible. They just need to – if you want Marine 5, just let them play. Get in, get out. Wham, bam, thank you, man, and be done. And it's too long. You know, the whole th- – the NFL needs to rethink the halftime show, I think. I completely agree. I think and we've talked about this before. Hashtag and every- Metallica, by the way. Oh, well, I think that's like everybody wants to see that. But let's just go through it because this was Marine F- Maroon 5. We've had Madonna. We've had Bruno Mars. I mean, it's always some – Beyonce, yeah. you know, Justin Timberlake. It's always some big pop act. They seem to have a thing against rock and roll bands. And it's weird because the songs – are not family friendly. If you really listen to those lyrics, like it's not like you're really getting like Disney style music. They're pretty risque. So it's not like that's the issue. I don't get it either, Steve. It's just like it's low energy. He sounded really thin. Uh, yeah, they're the vocals just not are terrible. A, uh, yeah, the vocals are uh, terrible. Well, I, I mean, it was real to bad. get into that and just the technical side, I mean, it's all dubbed. We know none of these people are singing. And well, I think that's as big a part of a why you don't get rock though. bands anymore. He had a live he, mic, but there was a track underneath him. Right. You know, is what it right. Was. Um, I mean, and they I had Tom Petty. Yeah, and I, I thought Tom, uh, Tom Petty was the last good one I can really remember. That's up my alley. Was Tom Petty that. after Prince or before Prince? I don't know. I can't Prince remember. was good. Prince yeah. was very good. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, a Petty, yep. I thought, sounded live to me. He did. You know, maybe he wasn't, but it, Petty sounded live. They had Springsteen. You mm-hmm. know, Springsteen they had McCartney. Was good. Mm-hmm. What's that? They had, they had McCartney. Not to, no, that was probably like 10, 12 years ago. McCartney, almost... McCartney bores me personally, but at least he's a legit artist. Right. Know? Right. He sings – all his songs are hits, and you know what they yeah. are. Like, yeah. you can yeah. not like him, Sands Beatles, was, but – You know what? McCart- I think McCartney was right after they got in trouble for the Janet Jackson boob slip. I think he was – That sounds right. It was, it's it's all right around that art. time. You can't it's, get a safer artist than Paul McCartney. It's slowly it's gone downhill ever since then, the Janet Jackson thing. Yeah. I yeah, just they yeah, need to get culminating me- in this. They need to get Metallica up there. Let them do their thing. Let them play live. Metallica is not going to play off track. You know, let them play live. And you know, if you want to get a rap act next year, the year after that, I think that'll vary the music. Certainly, yeah. The biggest thing to me is, let's you know, rock acts are popular too. Number one, and number two, let these people just play. Do not try to please everybody. Then you know, every year, it's I- I've always thought. Or recently started thinking, I shouldn't say always, but I've recently started thinking what they should do is they really should just always try and find artists who are local and just get, you know, every every Super Bowl is in a town that's got big name artists. Get the big name artists from Miami, from Dallas, from where 
L.A., wherever it's going to be. Well, that was the big yeah. controversy this year, you know, was that Atlanta's kind of the hotbed of hip-hop, and, you know, right. a lot of people were mad that they got Drag Maroon 5 in, who's a California, Southern California-based band. Right. That's the whole and reason they, why they randomly threw Travis Scott in there, you know, it, which it doesn't have – Just have Travis Scott or uh... – well, they could. Yeah. yeah. Or Big Boy was the other one, you know. Uh, when he really is Atlanta. Yeah. That's Outcast, and they, they are big Atlanta, so you at least have to give them that. But otherwise, think, you're right. It's like an afterthought. Yeah, and don't know, get me wrong. Back. I mean, you have a rap act up there, hip hop. I'm totally fine with that. But they need to vary it up, you know, and don't yeah. try to please everybody every year. And mm -hmm. where, are the, where are the country acts, for example? I mean, I'm not yeah. a huge country fan, but, you know, Keith Urban, I don't know who, you know, some of the big Taylor Swift, maybe, you know, some of the big country, you know, um, who's the guy on The Voice who's real popular? The big tall oh. guy. Um, what is that guy? Yeah. Name? Luke Bryant? But, is that who you're thinking? No, 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 no not the other one. <laughs> Anyway, well, they're I'm, all the same to me. All all, yeah. the, all the country guys now the same. Is it, Forget now, the guys. Yeah, name. now Sean's now it's bugging me too. It's on to my tongue. But point is, there's a whole slew of country acts that are very, sure. very popular. Try them, you yeah. know. And, so. and those and yeah, country music sells out stadiums. Yeah. There's no reason yeah. it's, a, it's a big blessing. Is it going to get made fun so. of by half the country? Yes, but so will hip hop by, by the other half of the country. I would make fun of like yeah, so I thought this. Travis Scott was totally unlistenable because it's not my thing, you right. know. And then he fell off the stage, which was hilarious. <laughs> I don't know whose thing Travis Scott is, but I, they yeah, I can tell you that to... I've got teenagers. That <laughs> it's the teenage every thing? teenager, yeah, he is huge and with the teenagers. That's the sign you're an old man. Is the teenage music is just you look at it and you're like, what the hell is this? I, mean, I finally I'm not reached a that point. Fan, you know, yeah. it's not my thing. I mean, I, I don't know. To me, it was in Atlanta. One of the hottest shows is Atlanta with Childish Gambino. You, you just get him. You know. See, yeah, I you know, know I, well, actually, that's it, a pretty good. I wouldn't know his music point. if it you hit me with it, you know, with a truck. Tell you what, you would have liked it more than that. Yeah, you would have liked it. More it, than it that. It's Guaranteed. funny. It, he's witty. You know, he's a smart comedian who's now a rapper. So, oh, I know who he is. Yeah, I yeah. just have never heard the songs. You know, and I'm still trying to find. Oh my god, Blake Sheldon. That's Blake Sheldon. Blake okay. Sheldon. Oh my god. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. That I was going to name be the really Blake Sheldon song either, but a lot of people don't. Them, you know. Yeah, I, I feel like no, all these right. country guys though, that you just mentioned were just cloned in some factory. They pop them out. They stick a licorice cowboy hat on them, and then they t say, "Go sing subpar country well, music." It's not your mm. thing, Alex. No, I, mean, I know. I, I, I appreciate country music probably more than anybody here. Certainly, I'll say this: my parents are pretty good personal friends with a big country artist who you guys would know, who I'm not going to say who. But um, when you're around him, when you hear him sing, his accent comes through a whole lot stronger than if you're just sitting on the couch talking to him. You know, the accent is fake. Oh, sure. You know, it's, it's it's it comes it's, with the music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it comes with the music. Because he's a country dude, but he doesn't sound like super overly twangy when you're talking to him. I mean, I like f old folk music, but that's more like your Bob Dylan types, you know, that started that. But perhaps this is enough about a halftime show. Yes, we are a football show. Uh, in terms of the in terms of the Super Bowl, well, um, the halftime might have been more interesting than the Super Bowl. That's the problem. <laughs> I, I was very it entertained. Was. Yeah, I was very entertained by the game. I'll say maybe I'm alone in that. No, I don't think you I are. Think I, you I are. love defense, so I don't mind it. I don't mind a game like that score wise. It was a defensive. Oh, chess I hated match. this. I thought I that Bill Belichick had a brilliant defensive game plan. Mm -hmm. He confused the heck out of Carter, uh, Carter, Goff, uh, Jared Goff. Um, I thought that um, it was very obvious what what uh, Belichick was doing. He was disguising every coverage, and Goff just can't read it. Just couldn't figure it out. Couldn't he was pulling pulling the edge rushers, linebackers up, and then he would drop them into coverage. Sometimes he'd blitz them back and forth. You know, he was he was disclosed, just hiding what the safeties were doing, and Goff had all sorts of problems with that. I thought Mc, um, McVeigh got thoroughly out coached. Why the heck would you? Not do those running back screens in mm -hmm. play action that the Rams are known for. What on he earth seemed to get really away from the game. Yeah, I yeah. agree. What on earth was going on with Todd Gurley? We'll never know. <laughs> you know, no I idea don't know why you wouldn't give Gurley twenty carries. Why, why is know? Gurley not in there ninety percent of the game? You know, yeah, I, yeah who knows? Um, so I, it was entertaining to me. That was my thought. Was I really liked what Belichick did on defense? I don't know why Julian Edelman was the MVP, except he has the number. Somebody on defense should have been the MVP, probably. But they, they, the NFL hates giving that MVP award to a defensive guy unless it's a, a Ray Lewis caliber name, you know? Yeah, unless you're a murderer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, right. that, you know, maybe someday if uh, the Texans get in, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see another defensive guy finally get the MVP. But other than that, I don't think it's happening anytime soon.
JJ. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't, you know, name one other defensive one guy who would probably get the MVP if he was in the Super Bowl. You know? I mean, the thing well, is, you on. have to have a numbers. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, Donald could have done it if he had had a good game. Yeah, maybe. You know, this, on Sunday, he could have pulled it off. He was that it, caliber, Maybe if but, they had won, know. he would have, you know. But, I mean, in ter- yeah. anyway, in terms of the Patriots and the Patriots offense, I, I mean, you know, Tom Brady's obviously a magician. It's mm-hmm. just incredible what this dude is doing. I don't know if he's, you know, if he's, you know, prayed to the right, you know, whatever God he's praying to, I want his address. Sure. You know? <laughs> I want to know where to send that the guy that whoever Tom Brady prays to. You have to, to start that guy a letter. kissing old you know? dudes on the mouth, though. Apparently, that's part yeah, of his it's religion. Very creepy. It's yeah. Very creepy. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but the funny thing was, really and truly, I mean, yeah, you know, Brady won a six Super Bowl, but the Patriots scored what thirteen points. Thir- I mean, it was a record low scoring Super yeah. Bowl. The fir- the yeah. worst lowest scoring Super Bowl was when we got beaten by the undefeated Dolphins fourteen seven, and now I mean, it's thirteen it three. Yeah, it wasn't exactly. Tom Brady's proudest moment. No. In terms of his performance on the field. I mean, Edelman had all those catches, you know, 10, 11 catches for, what, 140 yards? Yeah. But at the end of the day, they didn't really score. So uh, to me, the defense was the star of the show, and specifically what Bill Belichick was doing, disguising his front seven and disguising mm-hmm. his coverages, that won the Super Bowl. That I mean, it, every time, every play, they came out in a totally different kind of look. Uh, it was always like cluster, a clutter of guys over here on the right or on the left. Sometimes they would just be in a standard formation, but then guys would move up and move or move back. It, he was really doing a lot to disguise every play, but most of them were your basic five man rush. You know. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you didn't. There was no need to blitz. I, I think it. They were getting pressure on Goff. They hit Goff eight, nine, ten times. Yeah. You know, which is a lot. And that was – they didn't need to, you know, bring eight guys because they were getting significant pressure with just five mm-hmm. for the most part. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I enjoy the defensive games. I'm glad that refs kind of let a game like that happen because anytime you see a defensive struggle now, you got to kind of think, oh, no, the refs are going to just start calling everything so that this game has some scoring because, you well, know. Yeah, and the corners are really playing tight on yeah. both sides. There could have been a bunch of those calls that if it was a regular season or something, you would have seen a string of pass interference flags. Right, exactly. You know? um, yeah, I, and just as an aside, I think the NFL really needs to do something about pass interference. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, the the thing in, you know, the, the play in the, uh, the Rams and Saints game, you know, that can happen. And I, I just, I think if you're going to have a penalty that's going to be a, could be a 50-yard swing, mm-hmm. you know, you need to have the ability to review it. You know, somebody does. No, so, I think. Yeah, but I want to get. I think they need to totally relook at how they even call secondary play. It's almost impossible to play it now. Um, you know, just in general. I don't want. I don't think we want to get in on that tangent though today. No. Yeah, I mean, we we can stick with the, the Super Bowl for a little bit. I mean, because. So you didn't like I it, Sean? Tell us what, what. I mean, what was it? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I mean, I know that it's it's a common theme, and it's kind of contrary to what you guys were saying, but I thought this was incredibly boring. It was so slow, you know, a field goal or whatever at halftime. It was so boring. Um, I just am shocked by how unversatile the Rams looked. I mean, it just seemed like that he, that he just looked completely outclassed. McVay did. The whole team looked completely out, outclassed for a team that, like, has sort of cut its teeth this year on having a lot of players who do a lot of things, receivers that block, running backs that block, a lot of different looks they give. It just seemed like they came out and kind of had no idea what to do. Mm-hmm. And it just seemed like the Patriots had them completely confused, which is just weird because they are have the makeup of a team that should do well in a situation like this, and they just they blew it completely. I think they were overwhelmed by the moment. You know, like, I don't think Sean McVay really knew what to do. You know, and he didn't. He looked like he was going to cry. By the way, at the end you know, of the, the game. people we've had a couple Super Bowl winners on this show, and yeah. you know, and, and I remember them talking about how um, overwhelming the whole event is. You know, and you hear people who've played Super Bowls talk about this, and it takes a while to settle down. Yeah, you know, and and, and then you've got the Patriots who've been there what you know nine times or whatever the <laughs> number is ten times, and so they weren't nervous at all. And then so I, I think the 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 moment got to the Rams. I think it really exposed Jared Goff. Mm-hmm. You know, not to say he's a terrible quarterback or anything, but he's not at the level of an elite quarterback. He's just not. And and McVay, I think, will learn from this and be better next year. But he just didn't know what to do. I, I mean, I think Bill Belichick just totally outclassed him in every it's, way. It's Bill Belichick. I, people made a comment on our 
uh, blog at one point. It was a guy playing chess versus a guy playing checkers. I'm like, no, these are two guys who are playing chess. It's just one's Bobby fucking Fisher. Sorry about yeah, the profanity. Yeah, the other dude is <laughs> – the other guy is, uh, you know, yeah. some guy is on the street corner. Right. Yeah. 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 True. Yeah. Well said. Um, I mean, that's kind of the nature of this game. It's, there's just not much to say about it because – the Patriots came out, pick, you know, di- played relatively conservatively for the Patriots. I guess they struggled a bit against that defense, but picked them apart, had their way with them, controlled the game. The Rams didn't get anything at all going until the second half, and it wasn't enough. I mean, what else can you really say? I mean, it, it, I can appreciate, like Jamal said last week, I can appreciate Tom Brady for what he does, but I am so sick of him. Mm-hmm. I'm just yeah. so sick of him. And I'm so sick of him trolling the world with his Instagram videos. I'm sick and tired of the Patriots fans who are just the most entitled bunch of spoiled brats Fist fighting each other at their parade routes and yeah, all that. Yeah, it's just, you know, they, they're, they're competing with the city of Philadelphia for the worst fan base, you know, in the world. Or at least yeah. in the United States. Because some of those soccer I'll co-sign fans, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, maybe on the East I'm, Coast, at least. Yeah, well, the no, Raiders anywhere. are pretty bad fans, too. The Raiders are that. So, I mean, they're up there. But point is, I'm sick and tired of all of them. Right. I can't wait for the Patriots to go. I can't wait for Tom Brady to retire and the Patriots to be 2-14. and 14. I'm looking forward to that, and then I'm going to laugh. Well, our team is remains at seven and nine because we're always seven. And nine. I think the it it's more when Belichick leaves that they'll really I think fall. It's apart. A, kind of a two of them together, personally. Yeah, yeah I, if one of them leaves, the other one will keep them good. I, I, I'll tell Who you, do you think goes first? Brady. First, it's got to be Brady. Yeah, I, I mean, so. no matter what he says, the man can't play till he's forty-five. At some right. point, no, no matter I, how many weird stretching exercises he does with his. New Age Diet Guru, at some point his arm is going to just not be what it was. If you looked at that interview of him in the end of uh, the game, he does look worn and tired at this point. Well, he's 40, and he's been playing football for 20 years. Yeah, I know. No wonder. Yeah. But I'm just saying, he looks worn out and tired. And I'll tell you what, the other thing is, I mean, when Rob Gronkowski goes, Mm. and that may be this year, you know, he's, I mean, he's wavering back and forth. That's a huge hole in that offense because, you know, when when the going really gets tough for these guys, you know, even though Gronk has been hurt and all that, he is the biggest mismatch nightmare in football. Oh, yeah. In any any position. And he, and uh, they always go to him when they need, when they really need it. And when he's gone, you're not going to replace Gronk with anybody. That's true. Uh, to flip sides real quick, uh, even though they lost and they didn't look good losing, can we all kind of agree the Rams are going to be back in the Super Bowl at some point in Sean McVay's career? No. You don't think so? I don't know that. I mean, not necessarily. I'm not going to agree with that. And I mean, how many times do we see teams that are in the Super Bowl and we think, oh, this is going to be a dynasty and they fall apart? No, I don't believe that. I mean, the Rams have spent a ton of money, yeah. a fortune on these guys, and those type of teams always fall apart. So no, I don't, I'm not. I wouldn't surprise me if they get back, but I'm, I'm not going to sit here and just say, yeah, I'm sure they're going to be back. Yeah, I mean it's a tough question. I think they're definitely a post a postseason team. So you know, Super Bowl is a little tougher to call, but I think they definitely will continue to make the postseason. You know, after that, it's always a toss up. And if they get a couple more years and do well, I'll be much more confident in them. But yeah, I mean they're good enough for the regular season. That's for damn sure. One of the best. Yeah, I mean at some point though, this money thing is going to catch up with them. Yeah, you know, because what happens when golf? You know, golf is in what his third year. Yes, was, third year. Go, was this his third year going going into? This, his, okay, yeah, he's going so into this was season have, four. Yeah, okay. So you know, next year he's going to be on a massive contract. You know, they're going to have to pay him. You know, one hundred and fifty million dollars. Right. You know, over five years. Holy and how crap. are you going to do? I'm just telling. I mean, I haven't done the numbers, but that's the ballpark. And yeah. how are they going to do that? And afford Aaron Donald? And afford Todd Gurley? You know, and yeah. all these guys that they have, and Dominic and Sue has a big contract. All these guys have big numbers. That's when these teams fall apart. So yeah, I, well, I know. mean, we, we've seen it with the, the Seahawks, you know, yeah. the same thing. You had a yeah, bunch exactly. of talent. You had to decide who to pay. And the Ravens, that happened too after yeah. the Super Bowl. The Ra- well, the Ravens have this formula, it seems like. They build for a window of like two years, and then they let it fall apart, and they build for a window of two years, and then they let it fall apart. Well, I mean, the, Ra- the Ravens shot themselves in the foot by giving – Joe Flack of the worst contract yes. in football. Yeah. You know? and, and maybe that's what the Rams should learn from. Golf ain't worth that big contract that you, the number like All you're talking about. That having been said, though, yeah. he, he's still young. He may yeah. improve. You know, but the point, my point with all of this is, if you ask, can we agree that he's going to be back in the Super Bowl? I don't know if I agree with that simply because there's too much money out there for this team to stick with it like the Patriots have. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're, the Rams are a talent-laden team. 
the Patriots have succeeded because of whatever mad dust, magic and fairy dust Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have sprinkled over Boston, you know, because they've been doing it with a bunch of no names. You know, that's why they can they get back there, whereas the Rams have a ton of – they've bought a ton of talent. Mm. You know? Fair enough. So. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, okay, well, do we want to say anything else about these two teams or Super Bowl stuff in general before we move on to our next topic? Uh, the yes, commercials, can we pretend that commer- – can we stop making Super Bowl commercials a big deal? They're not very good. <laughs> they, they were really bad this They've year. They've been really, really bad the past really five years. Yeah, super underwhelming. I thought that. Now I've never been like a big commercial guy, even at the Super Bowl. But yeah, these were. This was a real bad crop. This I, year. I, you know, the the funniest one. I did, I'm not a big commercial person either. I didn't really watch most of them. But the funniest one got cut. It, there was a there was a commercial by Devour Foods that was called Food Porn. Yeah. yeah. There's a minute and a half <laughs> version of it out there floating around on YouTube. That's a, a whole lot funnier than what made it to air. You know, it, it's just it was wildly inappropriate for. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, ble- the one that made it there was pretty much on the edge, and it was nothing compared to what yeah. they did the whole the whole minute and a half. Shoot, yeah, you know. <laughs> and yet it's okay for Adam Levine to get up and do a strip tease for uh, thirty. Can minutes Can we all apparently. agree on this though? That <laughs> just because Adam Levine took his shirt off does not mean Janet Jackson gets to take her shirt off. I mean, <laughs> that was an issue. I, that was seemed to be an issue with the feminist crowd out there, and I, you know, uh, I'm sorry it's a societal norm, and you know, sorry. I, I, I'm okay with Jan Jackson taking her shirt off. <laughs> yeah, I support it. I, I <laughs> no, I'm not going to take a side on this. No, I'm sorry. You know me. I'm, I'm blunt. Steve about sees a woman topless. He's like, ew. It's not Cooties. that. I just, Cooties. of course, that's not my point. Morons. <laughs> my point is that you can't. Show women's breasts on television, and it is a long-standing television and societal norm that men can. You know, no, that's I think just the way the it networks is. are. The networks are with you. It's not that I'm long-standing. All, Back in the really, 1920s, yeah. men weren't allowed to sun go okay, to the was beach topless. Te- there wasn't even television. I'm talking about broadcast. I mean, believe me, I'm pro boob. Okay, I really am. <laughs> uh, who, every guy's <laughs> He's pro boob. Firmly okay? in the boob camp. <laughs> yeah. Every guy's pro boob. I'm just saying, it's not. There's no debate that. Just because Adam Levine took a shirt off, that doesn't mean the next next year's female singer can do it too. No, I get it. You're saying it's not an equi- equivalent thing. I understand completely where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's move on then from the Super Bowl. Thank God that one's over because, my God, we can stop talking about Tom Brady for a little while, at least an entire <laughs> offseason. That'll be nice. Uh, let's get to it. We had some Redskins stuff. We've got some guys that are working on contract. We got some rumor mil- rumors floating around the mill. Um, maybe we should start with these contract guys first. Sure. What is the latest on Mr. Adrian Peterson? I understand there's been some movement there this week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're talking to him. The rumor is that the Redskins are talking to Adrian Peterson about a new contract. Um, I mean, I'm for it. If the Redskins really want to be cold hearted oh, about of course. it, if they want to be cold hearted about it, what you do is. You just kind of put AP off and see how the running back market develops first, you know. But to me, I mean, it, many teams would do that. But if you're the Redskins and you have a guy who did well, you know, and he's willing to come in for a smaller contract that doesn't just demolish the salary cap, right? I think the Redskins should keep him. Not saying for a long term deal, another one year deal maybe. Get in, get out. So I'm for it. Although I understand the argument against it. I, I, I'm generally for it, too, if the price is right. Um, I, I'm with you. He, he has – they have to make sure he understands, one, you're, what, 34 at, at, and a running back. You're a 34-year-old running right. back. That's, you know, a unicorn. And, two, like, we just can't pay a running back a ton of money when we are, already have another starter in the wings. So yeah. if he's willing this to come back on, like, price. a you know, $2 million-ish deal – I would absolutely do it. You know, if it's he, if he wants five, ten million, no. Well, that's the question. So, what do you think coming off of this season? Because it was obviously a very strong one. Um, what do you think he boasts in terms of contract value right now? Steve? Whether or not we can really afford um, to pay it. Well, first what of all, I'm just going to guess. For uh, you know, my educated guess, I have not done a detailed analysis of the what he's worth value. kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah, no, I haven't gotten around to that yet because this news kind of came out of the blue a little bit. You know, here today. Um, I mean, I don't think he's going to have too many aspirations of huge contracts, okay? I mean, just as an example, um, you know, Chris Thompson's deal was the extension was two years, seven million. Right. Okay. I don't think, yes, Adrian Peterson's is a Hall of Famer, but I don't think he's looking for a contract like that. I don't think he's that naive. 
I really don't. And so I think, Alex, you're probably in the ballpark. Yeah. You know, if you could get it, I think he knows, you know, if they could, I, I think a 2 million or so cap, it is probably reasonable for him, mm-hmm. you know, so that, that's what I would look for. Yeah. And I think he would be very, very naive to think he's going to get a $7 million. Cap. I mean, you that's also have to remember, he's happen. probably at least, uh, if you're making, what's the plan? He's not coming in to be the number one. He's coming in to split time with guys. And maybe be a mentor to Darius guys. Right. You know, but the thing about Peter, the thing, the only, here's what, if you want a concern about Peterson, um, here's, here it is. Adrian Peterson's the guy who gets better as the game goes on. He's never split carries in his entire career. Right. And if we saw what this year, if you watch him, the games he really got rolling or the games he got the ball consistently. You know, he yeah. just – he starts to heat up and he wears defenses down. Also when he had um, blocking. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean that goes without saying. Yeah. But um, I don't know how – if we're going to see a guy who's nearly as effective if he's getting 10 carries and guys is getting 10. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'll, that's the neg- – that's, I think, the downside to, yeah. to me. Or how satisfied would he even be with that sort of scenario because we've seen him pretty frustrated at times sitting on the sideline, splitting car- you know, carries with people. He gets not you know, happy. I don't think that's what he wants to do. No, but you know what, Sean? I mean it's not like the NFL is beating down his door. The Redskins picked this no, guy up true. in training camp. Yeah. You know, and they yeah. made him try out. You know, <laughs> this dude had to try out. Not, so, not just training camp. But it was already in the – Preseason. Was, you're right. Yeah, it was after the first game, after guys yeah. went down. That's when they got him. I mean, so God, I, that's crazy to think. That, that. that seems so long ago. That having been said, though, I mean, Adrian Peterson just put up maybe the top or maybe the second best season ever for a 34 year old running back in the history of the NFL. So he did prove right. he can still play. So maybe he will have a couple more teams interested. Yeah. But this is not going to be a competitive situation where it's like the Lakers have to give away their whole team to the Pelicans to bring Anthony Davis in. You know, that's not what's going to go on here. He may get an offer. And if he does, you know, go, you know, more power. Thank you. And more power to you, you know. So I wouldn't compete with anybody for him. If we can bring him in on a reasonable price, I would do it because I think Darius Geis would benefit from having a guy like Peterson with his work ethic. It's like insane work ethic. Right. I think Geis would benefit. Show him the ropes there. Yeah. See if you can teach him how to kind of see the, you know, where the holes are going to be. I I don't know if that can be taught. but He can certainly help him become a pro running back not yeah. that guys needs it has a bad work i don't mean that he's clearly has a good work ethic but i just think it would be a benefit to him to play with a guy like peterson sure five bucks says bruce allen comes out in the media says some <laughs> stupid boneheaded thing about peterson sours the entire relationship and it ends with him leaving for an even smaller contract somewhere else when i'll take that because i think bruce allen's bet. done talking in the media i'll take that bet okay <laughs> he's he, gonna he go up there and that. call him Adriana or something, you know? Something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so that's AP. Honestly, good to hear that things are going there. I hope we get him back. Obviously, probably wouldn't be for any sort of long term contract, which is for the best. But it would be good to have him mm-hmm. back at least for Geis's fl- first full year with. The and team. he's that's probably weird. our next Hall of Famer. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Probably not. Right. Probably he is going to be the next Hall of Famer unless Jacoby gets in as a seniors committee. Guy Peterson might be the only one we have for a while, you know, because Trent's not going anywhere anytime soon. No, you know, yeah, that's going to be. And I don't while. know if that's Trent's true. not even a shoe in anyway. No matter what you guys think, he's not a shoe in. No, so we may not. It, Peterson may be the only one we have for a good long while. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you look at our whole roster. No one, no one's Hall of Fame. We got a couple good guys, but not. We have some Hall of Very Good yeah. types. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, ring guys. We have ring guys. Yeah. Well, this is why the offseason's so fun, guys, because we can get some Hall of Fame talent. Come yeah. on, keep your spirits. Up. Um, We're and gonna then get the to back one... to that, by the way. We're gonna get back to interviews. We're gonna do some interviews this offseason. We I have a couple in yes. my head. You know, we kind of got away from that a little bit in the season for a variety of reasons. Steve we'll is interviewing people back. in his head. I just want to point that out. <laughs> I'm planning some. <laughs> thought. I have thoughts in my head. All right, awesome. Well, let's keep moving through the uh, through the old rumor mill. Then yeah. the other uh, stuff that I heard coming out this week was co- uh, talks have started with Brandon Scherf about working out a new contract. So that obviously sounded good news. I think every single one of us is pretty pretty positive about Scherf despite injury issues. How are we feeling about these talks, and what are we thinking is going to shape up here? With I mean, talks? he's the number one priority to me. Yeah, on the yeah. team, it, the, his contract situation now is he's going to play on the fifth year option for 2019. That contract signed and done, and so what they're talking about now is an extension to right. that to that deal. And he's going to be the highest paid guard in NFL history, 
There's no doubt that mm -hmm. he's he's going to beat every record. You know, what's his name? Norwood last year. You know, he's going to beat that contract. Um, he's probably going to beat Zach Martin's deal because it's, you know, going to be two years in the, you know, after that. Right. So be prepared for a ton of it. But this is why the Redskins can't drop a ton of money on quarterbacks, people. This is why we can't go out and give Ryan, trade for Ryan Tannehill, like I've heard a bunch of you say. They can't take that kind of cap hit. Right. They need to save this money for Brandon Scherf. And, and the the interesting thing that I've been reading is that um, it, it, the reason the Redskins want to get a deal done with him, it's also that they know they don't have a lot of cap space. They're better off getting a deal done now where, okay, he, I think it's a $15 million hit. Again, for uh, well, twelve, it's two thousand nineteen. It's about twelve. Is, is it twelve for his? Yeah. They, they yes. think they can save a few million for two thousand nineteen on a long term deal. Uh, you know, and there's no twelve. Well, two thousand nineteen is what it is. I mean, basically now. Um, but yeah, you, what you're talking about is in the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. And also, I mean, if you have a limited, uh, you know, if you have only a few dollars in your pocket, you need to pay the rent first. Right. You know. And the rent in this case is signing the All Pro, the two times. Yeah, sign so, so, so your uh, sign your good linemen. That those are more important than a subpar quarterback from Miami. Yeah, at, well, it's like you know, this is the man you drafted. Right. He panned out. You know, he, he's been in multiple Pro Bowls. He's one of the top guard, top five, top three guards in football. Right. You don't let a guy like this run away. You make him the first priority. He, and lock he's him down kind the of the of key career. to your running game. Let, let, can we also say that? <laughs> yeah. So you want to lock him in for yeah. five more years and be done, and then worry about everybody else, right? And so, but we're talking about the 2020 cap hit. But the point is, they can't have Alex Smith on 18 million, some other quarterback on 20 million, right? And Colt McCoy, you know, getting paid for, and, right? And by the way, I happen. I am so sick. Every free agent quarterback we somehow are getting rumored to be interested in. I, I saw okay. one that we're interested in, Nick Foles. Was All right, let this me week. explain this really yeah. fast to the, to the people. It, it doesn't even um, – yeah, really fast because it's really it's, obvious. Yeah, it's – NFL teams don't spend more than about 15% of their cap on quarterbacks, okay? Right. The, the highest has been the Ravens for a while because of Joe Flacco's contract. We're at about like 12%. Uh, 49ers so that, now are higher with Garoppolo. With Garoppolo, that may be true. Yeah. And we're at about 12. And so if you do the math on that, that comes out to about $5 million bucks. OK, the Redskins can add about five million to their quarterback group and not throw the whole cap situation out of whack. So if you're talking about quarterback, Nick Foles is going to make 15 right. to 20 a year. Right. Um, Tannehill is on a, like a 20 million dollar contract. Teddy Bridgewater played one year for six million with the, with the Saints last year. Will he take that again? You know, I don't know. Probably, Probably not. not. Probably not. You know, and then the only other guy out there is Tyrod Taylor. And number one, I don't know if he's an upgrade over Colt McCoy. And number two, he was on a much bigger deal. Right. He costs, he, we can't afford that. All we can do, uh, you know, a first round draft pick is going to cost about 2.6 million in cap hits. We can do that. That's really all we can do unless you want to bring in a Ryan Fitzpatrick type. And that's not an improvement over anything. No, I mean, it's good depth. Um, and the Andy Dalton trade idea, again, he he's it's on stupid. too big of a contract. It's, it's yeah. Stupid. All. All these rumors about any quarterback who's in the NFL are almost impossible. It's impossible because of the amount of money they're already spending on quarterbacks. Right. Yeah. And so that was the one rumor from the rumor. The other one I think we have on our list is Spencer Long, right? Yeah. Yeah. Spencer Long got cut by the Jets. Um, you know, he was a guy that I don't know a lot of fans, you know, wanted. Um, you know, he's on the street now. Could he be a better guard, left guard than what we have, which is currently nothing? Yes. No guard? Sure. You know. <laughs> and he would. Yeah. I mean, that having been said, you really want, you know, sometimes you can't come home. You know, sometimes, you know, when you come home again, it's just not the same. So I, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, a big part of me says just because we had him before doesn't mean he's great now. And mm -hmm. why don't we just draft somebody? Well, you know? I, I understand that. Uh, but. I, I, I was one of those people who thought it was a huge mistake to let him go. I, I know the money was insane, what the Jets paid him, but uh, I, I always thought he was a better guard than he was a center. I, I don't know why the Jets grabbed him and had him play center. Like, it made no sense. And there is this weird thing where it seems like guys do go from Washington to the Jets and then back or vice versa. 
You know, if you look at Redskins history and Jets history, there's a lot of guys who play for both teams multiple times. Yeah. It's a weird relationship between well, these it's two. It's like they're going from one drag of the NFL to the other. Right. Well, you know, but you can go back to, like, John Riggins back in the day, too. You know? Oh, I mean, Lavernus Coles. Yeah, Lavernus Coles. And Santana had. Moss was part of that whole yeah. thing. Mark Sanchez, Mr. Butt Fumble, did it? Yeah, yeah. There was, uh, <laughs> I mean, the whole Jetskins yeah. who were part of the whole yeah. Coles era. The yeah. kicker, we, I can't remember. Name Hall. <laughs> yeah. 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 Point is, I mean, it would, I mean,. I think Spencer Long's probably a better option than what we have, which again is nothing. Right. You know, but they can certainly do better. And there's a bunch of quality guards uh, and tackles to be converted to guard, for that matter, in the draft. So maybe the team will go that way. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to bring Spencer Long back, but it's not going to propel him into the Super Bowl either. I just think it's a guy who yeah. stays healthy. Or he won't get hurt in preseason like the it's last more guy. Like yeah. he's the devil we know more than anything. Yeah, else, exactly. Yeah, right. And he had some positive buzz here before, which people are still riding. Um, I, I think I'm mostly with you, Steve. Um, you got to find homegrown talent somewhere. I, 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 I get the sentiment completely. And for God's sakes, he was cut by the Jets. Yeah. The, oh, I was going to ask. Well, <laughs> but the Jets aren't known for making good was... decisions. No, but well, but the thing is, Sean, that they he was the plain center. No, Jets. that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is that why it really that fell apart why. for him? Yeah, yeah. it's because he was so. center. But, I mean, do you really want a guy who's cut by the Jets to become a starter here? Is right. that really a wise <laughs> idea? Just generally speaking, is that wise? You know, no, but people <laughs> take Redskins cast-offs and make them into decent players. Yeah. So, hey, it happens. True. Uh, okay, let's move on from there then. Do we have anything else in the rumor mill? Um there was a Darius Geis put out a video running oh, a forty. Yeah, Darius Geis. Yeah, Darius Geis has been putting has been like leaking out all these training videos. And the one this came out Wednesday. We're recording this Wednesday. It came out Wednesday. This one I thought meant a little more to me because he was running a forty full sprint forty yeah, in the practice bubble see. in Ashburn, and that's great to see. Now, and so I mean, it's we're in February, and he's got what five months ago before mm-hmm. training camp. That that made me hopeful that he's going to make it for training camp. But when you, you were know, we, you, now, I didn't watch it. How did he look overall? It looked fine. Yeah, you know. But the thing about ACLs, for those you don't know, the last thing to come back is lateral agility. And what we haven't seen in his training videos yet are, is lateral agility, meaning cutting, hard cutting on routes and stuff. You know, that's what he hasn't leaked. So that's the last thing to come back. And um, that's what we haven't seen. But the fact that he is full sprint is good. Mm-hmm. So we just need to ne- – the next video needs to be him running patterns at full speed. Right. You know. Yep. Amen. Go ahead and leak that one. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Not sure there's much else to say about that. I mean, <laughs> wonderful to see. It's still early. So, yeah, running full sprints now. It's, yeah, that's good. Gives you hope. Yeah. All right, cool. Unless there's anything else we missed from the rumor mill, let's move on to our position group stuff. Is there okay. anything we forgot? Not off the top of my head. I mean, there's not a lot going on, you know, Redskins wise right now. I mean, we could, you know, beat up Jay Gruden some more if we want. You know, there's no, nah, we got plenty of time for yeah, that. Exactly. Plenty of time. You know. <laughs> OK, cool. Well, let's jump right on in. So we have been doing position group breakdowns for the last few weeks. We have pretty much finished the offense. So we'll uh, continue with the defense. We did linebackers last week. So this week, maybe we start with the edge rushers and see where we go from there. OK. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds, sounds good. good. Sounds good. All um, right. Who's got a okay. list of edge rushers? Do, do you guys not know me after all this time? <laughs> you have to ask. Do I have a list? Of I, I, I said who. I didn't say, <laughs> Steve, get your list of edge rushers. You know I have this. Yeah. And it's not like we can't do most of them off our head. It's like the maybe that like fifth guy that we picked up late in the season. I don't remember, but, you know. Well, okay. So the guys that are were on the team and they're now free agents, you know, folks like – Pernell McPhee, right. Preston Smith, um, mm. those two guys are free agents. Right. Um, the guy, re, truly, really, and honestly, we're kind of at a dearth of, you know, edge rushers right now, just contractually. But in terms of this season, since we're reviewing, we're going to get to the position group breakdowns later in the off season for 2019. Yeah, we usually but do that after of, the draft and free agency. Yeah, but in terms of reviewing the season on this, you know, I think you have to start with Ryan Kerrigan. Mm-hmm. You know, Ryan Kerrigan had another Ryan Kerrigan season. Right. You know, he disappears for long stretches. He gets a bunch, you know, he somehow acquires a bunch of sacks by the end of the season and he ends up with 12 or 13 sacks. Right. You know, he's Mr. Consistency on the season. Um, but, I mean, he has his limitations. I've always thought he's kind of a B-plus player. 
and he sort of you know he stayed that way. Yeah, you know this season. But I he's been a B plus very... player for us for now twelve years or whatever it's been. Yeah, whatever the number is. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, so I think it was another Kerrigan year, and I'm glad we have him. He's never going to scare too many people, but he's the best we have. Yeah, you know. And I mean, so. I mean, we say that like if I say he's also next year going to be the all time sack leader for the Redskins. It, it, yeah. Unless he gets traded, he, he's like five away or six away at this point. Yeah, a small number. And he was 2011, by the way. Oh, okay. So that's only, so yeah, so that's only seven. It's not seven. nearly as long as it felt like then, even. No. Feels like he's been here forever. Yeah. So he's a, so he's a Shanahan guy. He's probably in that first class of Shanahan people. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're right. For sure. Someone there. You know, I, I don't have much to add about Kerrigan other than what you said. I mean, he's obviously, like you said, he's the best that we've got. His stats are mm-hmm. lumpy. You know, they come in they come in big lumps, you know, and then there's this big barren desert between there them. There aren't many teams um, where he wouldn't be probably the best guy on that team, too. Let, let's agree. He's just not top five in the league, you know. Sometimes, you know, you can win just by being there. Yeah. And I don't mean to lump Kerrigan quite that low because he's not – but he's consistently good all right. the time. He's never great. And, and, you know, and, and if you're talking about season, we're talking about season in review here. The guy on the other side is Preston Smith is a lot like Kerrigan in terms of the way he plays and the skills he has. Mm-hmm. You know, the Redskins don't have a true speed rusher. I don't know what Junior Gallette did to really tick the Redskins off. He asked for $5 um, million. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and so they're just kind of done with him, I guess. But what the team lacked this past year was an elite athlete coming off the edge. Yeah. You know, you need – sometimes you need a speed rusher – you know, out there, even if it's just a third down guy and, and neither uh, Kerrigan nor Smith nor Pernell McPhee are really that guy. No, so I think that's what they lacked and they still lack it today. Yeah. E- everything we had last year was guys who were more balanced or built to stop the run. You know, yeah. It, Ryan it, Anderson, for example. yeah, Ryan Anderson is a perfect example of that. Uh, McPhee is that I mean, McPhee started his career off as like a defensive end or a defensive tackle. Yeah, he was inside guy. Yeah, yeah. and now he's, he's moved to so outside. Well, what the Redskins need to stop doing is stop drafting, you know, big husky defensive ends and trying to convert them to linebackers. Right. Please stop. Don't. I'm done with this. You know. Um, Maybe just I, really, draft those guys and have them play defensive end. You know. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Or, you know, like I don't think he's going to be available. But like, for example, Josh Allen. Right. You know, in the draft. You know, he's probably too high for us. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, everything I've seen, he's but, gone by the third pick. Yeah, right. But that's that type of player who's got elite burst. Mm-hmm. They need a, an – this, this team and this defense needs team speed in the worst way. A guy who's actually a linebacker playing linebacker? <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, yeah. Zach Brown is fast. i am not forgotten about him, but we talked about him before. Right. He's got limitations. But if you get away from Zach Brown, there's very little team speed. Mm-hmm. And one of the places they can add it – is an athlete off the edge. Yeah. And we just don't have that. We didn't have that all year. Um, you know, I think it's a weakness, you know, and, and quite frankly, the fact that Ryan Kerrigan has this hearing problem, it's always made me wonder if that's why they've consistently stuck him on the defensive left side instead yeah. of the right side facing the left tackles, which is the quarterback's blind side. I've always wondered that. I wish somebody would ask, but nobody ever has. Maybe I mean, that's been talked about early on, but that was yeah. – I, th- I feel like since Arakpo left, he has switched sides a little bit. But, yeah, I'd say 80% of the time he's on the right side. I hate to say this, but, you know, Brian Arakpo just retired. Yeah. Um, but he went to Tennessee and was everything there that he wasn't in D.C., meaning healthy. Right. <laughs> you know, it's a shame that it's just it's a very Redskins thing to let him go and all of a sudden he stays healthy. Well, you know, I, I think it's a very Redskins thing that guys get hurt because of something that we're doing here wrong. That that's where yeah, I what I've always thought. I, I wish I knew what it was. Yeah. You know, we would all be rich if we knew. But yeah. The Redskins clearly aren't doing something right. Right. I have a hard time blaming trainers for a, torn ACLs, but at the same time, something's not right. With when the when it's been happening something. every year. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, to get back to Kerrigan, I, I don't know. I know there's some people who hate Kerrigan for not somehow being JJ Watt or some top elite MVP caliber defensive player. Like, this team's built around, you know, having guys like – or good teams are built around having good guys like him on your team. And you just need more than just two or three. You need six or seven of them. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, he's going to be the most disrespected team sack leader ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think <laughs> he, he gets it at the end of the day, you know, he gets his numbers every year, but there's just something I, it's, I'm glad he's with us. Right. All of my point is, and I think you guys are saying the same thing is it's not new, but they need, he needs a compliment on the other side who is a speed rusher type. Yeah. An athlete who is explosive, who de- defenses have to game plan for. And that's what we're missing. And that's what we missed this year. And that's what we're still missing. So they really could, the Redskins are really do themselves a favor by finding somebody like that. In the draft, Josh, Josh Allen may not be the guy, but somebody like that. I, I mean, not to tip my hand too much, but I, be, you know, I'm the one tasked with looking at edge guys. Yes. This is a yes. deep draft for that. The, the, See, the people don't know this, though. Yeah. See, by the way, what we're doing here is we're changing up our draft coverage this year. Um, we're, you know, we're all going to take turns writing some of these things. What Alex meant is that Alex is – one of Alex's position groups is edge rushers. Right. And, so. uh, I mean, I, I, this isn't news to anyone who obsesses about draft stuff. There could be like six first-round pass rusher edge guys in this draft. Like, that's how deep yeah. it is. Yeah. So yeah. it, it, this could be the, a good draft to find a guy. I don't know if you want to take him in round one because, you know, we're so desperate in other spots. But, you know, there will be plenty of them. Um, let's, do you want to talk about uh, Smith next since he's the, you know, penciled-in starter on the other side for last year? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Preston Smith is the guy that constantly gets third base and can't ever get home. Right. You know, to put it in a, but I don't know what analogy I just used. Baseball. It was kind of a, yeah, baseball. <laughs> it, was a, it could have been a double entendre there a little bit, I guess. But oh. I was meaning it in a baseball sense. Um, y- you know, say the same things about Smith that you say about Kerrigan, only he's half a Kerrigan. Right. You know, he's not as capable. Did he get five um, sacks this year? How many sacks? Uh, I don't have it in front Something of Something like that. I'll, yeah, I'll look at that here yeah. in a minute, but something like that. And PFF loves him, you know, because he, he he does well in the advanced stats that are the you know the pressure yeah. the pressure stats. You know, um, he can get he gets a hand measuring... on the quarterback. He just never tackles the quarterback. He's that yeah, kind those of stats are measuring basically the ones yeah. that get close, but can't but aren't getting home. Right. You know, we Sounds need like Kerrigan. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Well, except Kerrigan gets his sacks at the end of the year. It, yeah, know. Kerrigan gets home. He just might home. get half he, of them in one game. Kerrigan doesn't get probably as many pressures as Smith was. Maybe not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you ask me, you know, I don't think he's worth keeping. I think you let him go. Um, I mean, I suppose that's a different question for a different day. Yeah. But, I mean, I, in terms of his performance this year, I don't think he showed us anything he hadn't showed us any other year he's been here. No. It's been the exact same Preston Smith every year. Yeah, I think he, he's his numbers are pretty constant. If you were to say, well, he's just part of a tandem on the other side, which – I feel like in the past that's been more what they've done. It's he plays part of it, then they would have the number two guy come in, and he and they would just kind of split time. But they didn't do that as much this year. It feels like no. I, I I haven't I mean, looked at the snap have, counts, they but didn't have someone to split with. Yeah, I mean McPhee yeah. kind of can do some things, uh, you know. But yeah, yeah, it was really just Smith the whole most of the time. McPhee was never coming here to be anything but depth, right? You know, and that's what he proved to be. I have nothing against McPhee. Yeah, uh, he was good there. But, yeah, yeah, they're not – I mean, he's not going to be back. No. Um, but, anyway, uh, on Smith, I've always thought he was a, maybe a step faster than Kerrigan. But, yeah, he's still not a speed guy. And, okay, here's his numbers I have now. Um, he had eight sacks in 2017, four sacks in 2018. Mm-hmm. If you want to go over his whole career, it was eight, in two, eight sacks in 2015, 4.5 and 16. Eight and seventeen and four in in two thousand eighteen. So, he, so he's, he's in every other year kind of guy. <laughs> it's what yeah, it sounds he's like. Every, he's every other year, dude. So yeah, he may be due for another eight sack year coming up. Yeah, well, I, I think it, like I think you're right. It'll be somewhere else because he's going to look to get paid, and the Redskins I don't think want to pay a second outside edge guy. 
No, not one that's not going to be able to complement the team we already have and make much of. I think you could do better. I think of the, of the two, yeah, Carrickin's obviously the one you retain. So Smith is expendable, which is not to say he's a poor player, but uh, I mean he's a free agent, yeah. and you know they're not going to break the bank. You know, and I think just generally speaking, I think if you're expecting the Redskins to have a huge free agency this year, I just don't think that's going to happen. You know, Jay Gruden's going into what his sixth season here now. I mean, coaches in their sixth years in a in a team don't blow up a roster. No, you know that that's not that's just not what they want to do. You know, because they don't have time. You know, so I mean, they make some changes on the peripheries. And the Redskins don't it. have the money to have that kind of season anyway. Well, I mean, they could cut a bunch of guys. Sure. If they really wanted to blow it up, you cut Jordan Reed, you cut Vernon Davis. Yeah, get rid of the you, core. You know, guys you cut. Say yeah. we're doing this a year too early, and yeah. But you don't do that when you have Jay Gruden in your six. Jay and Jay doesn't want to do that. No. Jay believes in these guys, and he just wants to tweak things, you know, and and get healthy. So I just don't think if you're expecting that, I think you're probably going to be disappointed. Right. I agree. I, I think uh, it's not that this is not going to be the season where they do it. It'll be next year, uh, from everything I can kind of tell, reading the tea leaves. Um, yeah. In terms of Smith, I don't know if you guys had any other thoughts on him. I, the only thing I kind of wonder about with Smith is I wonder if he had played more on the right side if he had had better numbers throughout his time here. Could be. You know, I mean, going against lesser yeah. talent usually on the right side. So Yeah, there you go. That's enough to probably to make a nice statistical bump yeah. right there. Well, on the other hand, yeah. though, I mean, the right side is not the blind side. And so, you know, part of it is the quarterback can see you. Right. Right-handed can. quarterback – can see you if you're coming off the defensive left edge. And so the point is to put the elite pass rushers on the right-handed quarterback's blind side. So yeah, I, I understand that part too. There. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it makes complete sense. Um, okay, who else do we have left? we got five minutes left, so I know we got one or two more guys here we got to talk about. Well, why don't we, you know, you want to do, um, I mean, we've kind of hit edge rushers, quite frankly. I mean, the only ones that we, Ryan Anderson, we talked about Ryan Anderson. He's, I, I think, come look. Ryan Anderson had a few sacks at Alabama. Yeah. Um, that's the Alabama, though, that had a massive talent, um, you know, advantage over everybody they played every week. I think Ryan Anderson, if you see him, he's a run stopper. I don't think he's ever going to be anything but basically a run stopper. I mean, they spent a second-round draft pick on the kid. I don't know if he's really proven to be worth a second-round no. pick. No, so far not. he's been kind of a disappointment. Yeah, you know, he hadn't really put up the numbers. But that having been said – um, uh, you know, can he can he do well as a first and second down guy? You know, probably. Whether or not he's going to become a starter, I don't know if he has that in him, and that's what you would want out of a, out of a uh, second round pick. I mean, I I, I think projecting in the future, unless they draft somebody early, he might be a st- our starter next year. <laughs> <laughs> out of just <laughs> out of necessity, if yeah. nothing else. But I, I mean, the last couple of years, and I've said this, I think this is the plan for the Redskins is. They seem to draft a guy in, like, the second or third round every other year and just, you know, have – keep guys on rookie deals and then let them walk and, you know, live with the results. So I'm – That's been going on for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, look, that's what they do. That's what the Redskins do. Yeah. You know, there's – if you go back through the history of this team since Dan Snyder has been the owner, there's only been a handful that get – Long-term second second contracts from this franchise. Yeah, it's basically if Kerrigan when you draft in the first them. round, then you'll get it. If not, probably yeah. not. <laughs> Kerrigan, Trent, Trent Williams are rarities in the history of the modern history of the Redskins. Yeah, that just doesn't happen much, um, you know, for whatever reason. And it's not a salary cap management thing; it's just incompetence, basically. Yes. More than anything. Yeah. Because right, well, I'll tell you go. what. They let Lorenzo – sorry, I didn't interrupt. But, I mean, like, no, Lorenzo good. Alexander is a guy who they should have kept. Right. Just off the top of my head, you know, Lorenzo left here for a couple million bucks difference was what the difference was. And he went out and had a very productive career, you know, with the Cardinals and then the Buffalo Bills. He was an outstanding citizen. Yeah. You know, great guy, great teammate. That is a guy who the Redskins should have kept for a decade. Yeah. You know, instead they let him go over a million dollars here and there, and they never really replaced him on special teams. He was a big special teamer, if I recall. Yeah. You know, and, and he had a lot of ability, and you know they just let guys like that walk constantly. Yeah. No talent retention has not been a strong suit of this team. 
Um, okay, well, maybe we should cut it off there. Then we're at about an hour. You want to throw out some more thoughts on edge rushers or anything we can save these other positions for next sure. week? Uh, Any other uh, um, big thoughts I think about this? If McPhee's gone, uh, I think you do need a guy like that on the team, though. A, at least one edge rusher who's a, more of a run-stuffing big body. Uh, more, you know, just in the depth chart somewhere. Those guys are good for those third and short situations. Yeah, I mean, they need... So to me, the Redskins need to find somebody like Junior Gallette without Junior Gallette's massive attitude problem, right? <laughs> you know, you know, which he does have. Sorry, Junior, if you're listening. Um, you know, that's the type of guy they need. Because what I remember is what our observations in tra- his first training camp here. And I can't remember if it was Robbie who said this. Might have been Robbie Duncan who said this. Was that he was the only guy who was who could consistently beat Trent Williams? That was it. Was Junior, right? You know, and and it's because of his athlete elite athleticism, and you know that's I think maybe the number one priority on defense for me if I were in charge would be finding an athlete off the edge more than anything else. That's they need a lot of things, but I shouldn't. There there are some interesting ones coming out in the draft uh, who don't fit the prototypical size that I think you should look at, and I'll tell you about them later. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. But that's why I wouldn't make it the number one priority because there's a ton of priorities. But that would be a priority for me is finding that athlete, elite athlete off the edge. I agree. Sure. And the people at home will have plenty of time to hear about our draft priorities in the coming weeks and months. Plenty of time. We have nothing but time, people. (laughs) (laughs) It's on our side. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, we will um, cut it off there this week. But remember Steve's announcement. We are looking for writers. There is an article up on the Hog's Eye about that. But, again... Just a reminder, it's a 700-word column on a topic of your choice to the at gmail.com. Due by next Sunday. Yep. Right, Steve? Right. Yeah, the 17th. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, very good. Well, and uh, make sure you're submitting those and keep checking back on thehogstye.com for all our written content coming out throughout the week, and we will see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>